Hello, Home Avenue, uh, First Church of God's uh, Children's Church. I trust everything's going well with you. Um, hope that you're uh, making the best use of your time uh, out of school. And for those of you that are uh, still in school, uh, that you're able to do your work at home, uh, that you're able to do it on the internet or whether you're mailing it in. Hope you're finding ways to stay busy. I know these pretty days. I hope you're able to get out and play some, uh, play in your backyard, front yard. Uh, hope you continue uh, doing some uh, household chores. Uh, don't forget to uh, clean up your rooms, uh, pick up your toys, uh, help your mom or your dad or grandparents uh, with some of the chores around the house. I know they'd really appreciate you doing that. And when you say you get bored, it would be a good time to ask them if there's something you can help them with around the house. And, you know, when you're drinking a can of pop or get a bag of chips out or something, it wouldn't hurt you to pick that up and take it and throw it away or put it back in the refrigerator and pick up your clothes and put them in the laundry basket if they're dirty and some things like that would be very helpful. And also, uh, during this time, if you have brothers and sisters in the home, uh, be good to Try to treat them well and try to get along with them and uh, try to treat them loving and kind. Um, I wanted to remind you again, you know, last time I was on, I shared with you that I had gone to a church and asked Buzzy B if he would come out of his hive to help us because we were going through some difficult times with, those, with us not having church and having to stay at home and not go to church. And so I went and got Buzzy B and I've been keeping him here at the house, and so I've got Buzzy B with me again. And remember, he he told you to uh, that he he said that he would uh, help us. And so I asked Buzzy B to help us, and he's back again today to help us. And he wants you to be kind to each other. He wants you to be caring with each other, to be loving toward each other. You know, it just makes things go a lot easier. Uh, we all have bad days. But hopefully you'll have more good days than you do bad days and that you'll remember that Buzzy B wants you to be kind to each other, kind to your parents, kind to your brothers and sisters, kind to those that are around. Because I know it's easy to get kind of grumpy. I know I get grumpy having to stay in so much. And uh, many of you are probably missing uh, going to school. You don't get to see your friends as much as you'd like to, probably not at all. So I hope you'll stay busy doing good things. Don't forget to do your homework. Uh, try to read and stay active. Uh, try to set yourself a schedule. Don't sleep all day. Don't watch video games all night. Uh, try to stay healthy. And uh, don't forget to pray. Try to remember to do that, especially before you go to sleep at night. And also before you uh, eat your meals. Even before you have a snack. You know, at uh, church, when we pass out the snacks, one of the things you would say is, we have to pray before we eat our snacks. So as we get started today, let's pause and pray before we get started, okay? Dear God, I thank you for this opportunity for us to come together through this uh, YouTube to pray. I thank you for the children that are watching this right now. I thank you for our pastor, Pastor Todd, and for Celia and Dakota and Elliot as they have been uh, sharing messages of hope and encouragement with, with us on the YouTube. Thank you for Rebecca as she has been sharing a message with us. Thank you for Christina and the others that will be sharing children's lessons with us. And today, God, may you bless us as we listen for another message. God, may you continue to protect the children and help them, Lord, to be kind and loving to each other. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Well, I trust you'll continue to be that and be kind to each other. Well, this month, in our Bible reading and as a theme of our church, we're looking at the biblical character of Joseph in the Old Testament. His father's name was uh, Jacob. And Jacob had 12 sons. And uh, Joseph 
was number 11. And there were some things that were special about uh, Joseph, or at least Jacob thought they were. And there were some things that were very special about Joseph. One of them was that in the Bible, he's one of the few characters that we read about from the time he was born until the time he passed away or died. When he was very young, uh, he would dream dreams. And uh, he would tell them to his father and he'd tell them to his brothers. Uh, his brothers didn't quite like uh, him dreaming dreams. Uh, Joseph even got the name of Dreamer. Now, I don't know if that was a good nickname or a bad nickname. I think his brothers didn't like that name. And so they would say, hey, there goes that Dreamer. You may have known some people in uh, school. We call them daydreamers. They just kind of sit and glaze out the window or daze out the window or just kind of go off in la-la land. Well, Joseph wasn't that way. He could, uh, he could sometimes see things that were going to happen. But he told about those, and often those were things that God was showing him, but they did get him in some trouble. And then some other things that were special about Joseph was that uh, his father thought he was special. And his father made him a coat of many colors. I can just imagine all those different colors. I thought, as I was thinking about that, I thought, oh, think of all the colors that are in the rainbow. Think of all the colors that we have. Think about his coat with all of these different colors. And so the father, father made this coat or had it made for him and gave it to him. And I imagine when he put it on and walked around, his brother saw it and the Bible says they were jealous. They were very jealous at Joseph and his coat. So there again, you see the problem starting to build between Joseph and his brothers. Well, his father sent Joseph out to check on his brothers. They were out tending the sheep. And Joseph went out and looked for them and found them. And when he got out there, his brothers, uh, hmm, they talked about it and they first said that they were going to kill him. They were so jealous of him, they were going to kill him. And one of the brothers said, no, let's don't do that. Let's don't do that. <laughs> really, they were thinking about what money they could get for him. And actually, they threw him in like a well. They called it a cistern. I would say it was like a ditch. And hit him in that ditch, and there were some travelers that were coming along. And they lived in Cana, which is called the Promised Land. So... These travelers were on their way to Egypt. And I looked up on the map. I wondered how far it would be for him to go. And so if they sold him to these travelers there in Canaan land, and they took him to Canaan land, and they took him all the way to Egypt. And I was wondering how far from home did Joseph actually go? And it said it's a little over 540, 45 miles. I thought, wow. That's a long ways from home. So think about Joseph, a young man. He's probably about 15 to 17 years of age. His brothers were so jealous of him that they beat him up, took off his coat, threw him in a pit, sold him into slavery, and he went 500 and some miles away from home, not knowing anybody. Hmm. Well, the brothers were so cruel that they even took this coat and dipped it in some blood of a animal that had been killed and took it back to his father and said, hey, hmm. your favorite son, the dreamer, Joseph, a wild animal, has killed him. So Joseph was in a mess going into a far country. Well, things did get some better for Joseph in the far country. Uh, he, these dreams turned out to be fairly well for him. They helped him get move on, and he had learned some things that um, helped him, served him well. And he uh, ended up in a, the house of a ruler. He was a servant, but he got some favors because he was a special man. But he got in trouble again. 
the ruler's wife accused him of something he didn't do. And he got thrown in prison. He was in a mess again. He was in trouble again for something he didn't do. Before he dreamed dreams and, well, he told about what he had dreamed and, well, that probably was part of his problem. The coat of many colors, that, he had not asked for that, so that got him in trouble. That was, he didn't ask for that. He didn't ask to be traded into slavery. And he didn't ask to be in the ruler's house. It's just that he was a good leader and the leader spotted that and promoted him. And it wasn't his fault. He had not done what this woman had accused him of doing. It accused him falsely. So he was in trouble again. So there was some trouble spots, some trouble things in his life. He was thrown in prison. And while he was in prison, he met some other people. And there again, it came back to the dreaming that Joseph had done as a young child. Some men came to him and said, you know, they were in prison. Well, this has happened to us. That's happened to us. Can you tell us what this means? And he told them. And when they went to the king, they said, he said, remember me when you go to the king. Well, when they went, they didn't remember him. Again, it wasn't fair. But there came a day when the, the king, Pharaoh, when he needed somebody special. And somebody remembered that there was a man that was special in prison. And they called for Joseph. And Joseph came and Pharaoh the king asked that he might interpret his dreams. And he interpreted the dreams and because of that, this king, this ruler, this leader established or set up Joseph as a ruler, second only to him in all of Egypt. Wow, what a story. From a little guy, young man that was dreaming dreams that his brother made fun of, called him the dreamer, to the young man that was uh, hmm, was going to be killed, thrown into a pit. Father thought he was dead, sold into slavery, became a slave, a servant, went into Egypt, didn't know anybody. Ended up in prison because he was accused falsely. He, wasn't, he didn't do it. Ended up in prison a long time. And now he's almost like a ruler. Hmm. But through it all, God was with him. And while he was there, God used him to help the people in Egypt to prosper. Well, we're going to fast forward, kind of do like they do in, on uh, TVs and YouTubes. We're going to kind of jump forward. And God uses Joseph to help save his whole family. Well, his brothers come over to Egypt to get grain because they were starving back in his home. His father sent them over and back. And so we'll go forth because this is close to the end of the story. And because God had sent Joseph ahead and used Joseph going ahead, Joseph was able to save his father and his brothers by giving them grain that he had helped store up in Egypt. Wow, God was going to use them. And you know, Joseph didn't have a, have a get even attitude. Wow, now's my chance to get even with them. These guys that sold me into bondage, these guys that used me. He forgave them. He loved them. He cared for them. He wanted to see his brothers. He wanted to see his father. He wanted to see Benjamin, his youngest brother. And he forgave them. There's a scripture I always like to quote when I think about Joseph. And he said to his brothers, You meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. Well, one of the things I want to show you or share with you to help you remember this story is an, uh, a jar. You know, these pickles. Have you ever gotten in a pickle? <laughs> this is a jar of pickles. You know, uh, as I shared the story, Joseph got in a pickle a couple times when he dreamed dreams. And when he had the coat of many colors and got thrown in the pit, 
when he was in the prison. Maybe you wanted a pickle and you've gone to the refrigerator, but you couldn't get it open. Or maybe you wanted a jar of peanut butter or some jam or jelly and you couldn't get it open. Well, when Joseph dreamed dreams, well, he couldn't change what happened to him. When he was in the pit, he couldn't get out on his own. When he was in prison, he couldn't get out on his own. And so maybe when you can't get this jar open, what do you do? Hmm. Well, you go hungry, don't you? No. You ask somebody to help you. Maybe it's a brother or sister. Maybe it's your father or your mother. And sometimes if your mother can't get it, she'll take it to your father or somebody else. Uh, I know around our house, uh, if Diane, uh, if she can't get it, she'll bring it to me and Anymore, uh, as I get older, I'm not as strong in my hands as I used to be, and sometimes I'm just a little embarrassed if I can't get it open. So one of the things, I don't know if you've seen them, but one of the things we have at our house, and I'm glad we have them in case I get embarrassed, is we have these things. You ever see them? Grippers. You put it on there and it gives you extra gripping strength. I'd like to say it helps me get a grip, okay? And we even have one. I even have one that's in the shape of a heart. I like that. Get a grip. You know, when we get in a pickle in life, we sometimes just expect God to come down and bail us out. Well, in Joseph's case, when he was dreaming dreams, God didn't just come and bail him out. When he was in a pit, God didn't just come and bail him out. When he was in jail, God didn't just come and bail him out. Why didn't he? It wasn't because he couldn't. But through it all, God was with him. And God was helping him. And God was teaching him. And God was preparing him. He was growing up to be more like God. God was preparing him for what he had for him to do in the future. And so then when he got to Egypt and he was there able to help feed the people of Egypt, then he could do what I'm going to get ready to do. Then he could enjoy hmm. That's good. So when you get in a pickle and you can't open it, ask somebody to help you. And while you're waiting, try to ask God what he's trying to teach you. Well, God bless you. I sure miss you at church. I'm looking forward to when I can see you again. Have a great day. Goodbye.